listen to the vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I'm very happy to welcome Greg Davis here. Now, he's the author of the book Checkmate tips and lessons to help you make the right moves to achieve happiness but there's a lot more to you so tell us a little bit more about yourself yeah well first of all thanks for having me today Kyle. i'm really looking forward to our discussion and hopefully your listeners will get some good tips out of today's talk uh just by way of brief background uh i'm i'm an accountant by nature that's how i kind of developed my career so i'm basically a bean counter who turned to a professor where I taught at the University of Illinois for seven years, and then I went on to retire in 2021. So I'm in my third year of retirement, so we can talk about that a little bit. And then most importantly, uh, I, my biggest bucket list item on my retirement goal list was to write a book, which I did and published last April. Actually, today is the one-year anniversary, so this is pretty cool being on your show today. Wow. But I'm really looking forward to talking about the, the, the tips and lessons in this in this book. Well, can you give us a quick rundown of what the the book actually entails so yeah people get to. an idea yeah I, you know i've had a lot of people who have described it many different ways because there's so many topics that are covered in this book kyle i mean i cover relationships i cover um i cover family issues i cover career changes i cover retirement preparation some personal finance tips and then i end up with some of the things that uh, drive me happiness that that i'm hoping my your listeners will kind of pick up and say, you know, what what really makes them happy? Because that's the things we need to be doing more of, right? Oh, yeah. So best best description I've had of my book is somebody wrote that basically a 60-some-year-old man has taken his 60-plus years of, uh, of life on this planet and boiled it down to 150 pages that include 12 uh, life lessons for all of us to follow. Hmm. Basically, your life coaching, business coaching, relationship coaching, all that. Yeah, and actually checkmate, you know, a lot of people think it's a chess book. It has nothing to do with chess, but there's chess analogies throughout the book because there's a lot of things that are similar in chess as in life. But actually the checkmate word is actually an acronym for me on, on topics I cover. I can cover those if you like. I can go through them or, or if you like. Sure. Love yeah, that. The, the C in checkmate is career changes, our hard work, but very much worth the effort because that's a lot of us go through that throughout our careers. H is happiness is only achieved when you find something you love. We'll talk about that further. The E is ensure you're spending quality time with your family. And, and you know, I know we all have family issues that we deal with both health wise and, and, and so forth. And I've had some really rough experiences there, but it made me appreciate my family more so than ever before. The C is cancer and other medical issues are hard, but overcoming obstacles are a big part of life. We all have to deal with those. The K is knowing that age is just a number and new experiences lead to an enriched life. A lot of people I talk to think that, you know, once you hit 60, kind of life is over. I find it just the opposite. I'm loving life in the 60s, and there's a lot that I haven't experienced that I want to yet. And then M is money. Money is hard for many of us to even talk about, right? But failing to plan is planning to fail. The A in Checkmate is a job that has special meaning is worth the time it takes to obtain. I had those opportunities at Hershey. We'll talk about that. The T is take the time to find a good life partner, because I think finding a, a proper spouse is really a key to your success in life. And the, finally, the E is enjoy retirement. As you work hard to, to achieve it, you might as well enjoy it. Well, you touched something pretty good there about picking the right spouse. Yeah. I got married when I was 19. Wow. And we were together. It was pretty close to 20 years, but time. it just... It fell apart. We, okay. uh, we should have never got married when we did, but I don't regret having my children. That was the best part of it. There you go. That's the highlight. But it took me over what, 10 years of being uh, alone before I finally found the right woman. And mind you, I actually prayed about it this time. I was like, God, you you got to help me find the right, right woman here. <laughs> And well, I think they did. <laughs> he he really did. And it's made such a difference in my life. It's, uh, uh, you know, the relationship that we have, she has encouraged me to get back on the spiritual path. Oh, that's she, great. She refused to let me feel sorry for myself when I developed my spinal disease and, okay. you know, re retiring at an early age, you, 
everybody thinks, oh, that's wonderful. No, it's <laughs> it's it's not as great as it seems. No, you're right. There's a lot of pitfalls there. <laughs> right. But it's been a blessing because I've found that I love podcasting. I, I love helping people. I love meeting new people. I learn so much. It's it's been a, like you a, found the thing that you love oh, yeah. podcasting, Kyle. And that's great. I'm, I'm sure your listeners appreciate what you do for them. Um, well, I appreciate them because without them, I, I just I wouldn't be here. And right. That right. one message out of all the videos that I've ever done, the one message that someone sent me thanking me for having a, a guest on that, that changed their life. Wow. All of it worthwhile. Yeah, it does make it worthwhile. So that's great. What are your tips on actually finding that thing in your life that you really, really enjoy? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you by way of example. I mean, I worked, I was very fortunate. I, when I came out of college way back in 1981, I was kind of figuring out what to do, right? As we all try and figure out what we want to do with our lives. I kind of bounced around, Kyle, as many of us do for the first 10 years to four different jobs. And that's not uncommon here in the U.S. to bounce around every two to three years. And then luckily, um, in 1991, 10 years out of college, I found a company called Hershey Entertainment Resorts based in Hershey, PA. And we're the kind of non-chocolate side of the Hershey Chocolate Company. <laughs> so we're the uh, entertainment with uh, we have amusement parks and we have concert venues and beautiful hotels. So it's kind of the fun part of the city, of the city of Hershey. And I stayed there for 23 years, Kyle, because here's what I loved about working for that company. It wasn't just a paycheck. The mission of that company was that 100% of the amount we made as net income went to the Milton Hershey School. And I know you're from Texas, so a lot of people haven't heard about this, but Milton Hershey School is a school for underprivileged children. They serve like 2,500 kids in all grades, uh, K through 12. So, you know, to think that our mission is to support those kids really made my day, daily work so much more meaningful. It wasn't just a paycheck coming every month. It was what was being done for those kids and, and, and helping them get through life in a much better form. So that was the key. And then, you know, after 23 years of that, I, I had been teaching adjunct as a, at local colleges. And I found that that was truly what I most enjoyed. I mean, even more so than working for Hershey, I love sharing my knowledge with others in the classroom environment. So after I took an early retirement in 2014, and I talk about this career change in the book because it's not as easy as many people think, um, it was tough for me to get into academia because I didn't have a PhD. And you know, your listeners must understand that we all have obstacles, but I learned that that PhD was kind of a big impediment for me. So I had to try and overcome that. And I, I went through a lot of different methodologies, including going to large seminars, with other accounting professionals. And that's where I got the opportunity to go to University of Illinois in uh, Champaign, uh, Urbana. And there I spent seven years and that was truly, you know, we talk about what, what, what's your why in life? That was my why in life, Kyle, was just inter intermingling with these amazing students, University of Illinois in the field of accounting, not the most exciting field, I'll be the first to admit, but these are some of the best, brightest students in both the U.S. and, and, and international. They have a very large, like 15 percent are international students. So I love those. Those classroom discussions are what made my life so interesting because we could take a topic that I would bring up maybe from my Hershey days and talk about it both in the U.S. and the international side. So I think the bottom line message here is, as kind of epitomized in my book, is find something that you really love. You love podcasting. I love sharing my knowledge in accounting and finance with others. Those are the whys that we have in our lives. And I want, I want your listeners to find that for them. Something about that. Um, when I was younger and, you know, married, I had children trying to you know, <laughs> keep paying the bills, that kind yeah, of thing. It's a lot to juggle. <laughs> it, it really is. And there's so many people out there like that, that, they are too afraid to step away from what they're doing because I mean, let's, let's face it. A lot of us, they, we get it in our heads. This is steady work. Um, you know, I'm taking mm -hmm. care of my kids. I got benefits. If you're fortunate enough to get them I'm working for the city, I definitely did. Yeah. But I don't think that if this hadn't happened to me and I was forced to retire, if I'd had the courage to actually pursue what I wanted to do. 
Yeah, that's a hard thing for all of us to do, uh, Kyle, to your point. And I think it's in, you know, incumbent upon your listeners just to kind of take a take a second look at their job today. Is it something they truly enjoy doing? For most of us, quite honestly, it isn't, right? I mean, it's just it's just paying the bills and getting us through life. But I found I was very lucky to find the Hershey opportunity, and even more so when I found the Illinois teaching opportunity. Those are truly things that made me want to jump out of bed each morning. And many of us don't have that feeling when we want go on to work, unfortunately. And bringing back the subject of balance, I know how important it is to balance everything in your life. Uh, and this goes back also to when I was working, you know, in order to get ahead, you, you, always volunteered for that overtime and worked as many hours as you could, but then you sacrifice the time with your family. Yeah. What do you say to the person that's going through that? Yeah, that's a go in the work life balance is one of the hardest, I think issues to tackle in any career. Right. I mean, I talk about this in the book and in the uh, situation I had at Hershey, I was, uh, I was currently like the number two person in the finance board. And I was happy being number two. <laughs> it was a lot less responsible than the top person. Uh, but unfortunately, he got an opportunity to be an interim CEO at our at our ownership, which is the Hershey Trust Company. So I was put in as interim chief financial officer for a period of about a year and a half. Quite honestly, Kyle, they're the worst 18 months of my life. And because you talk about work-life balance, I was working like 65, 70, 75 hours a week. Because I was still doing my prior duties in addition to the new duties put on top of my shoulders. And as much as I loved Hershey, I was really stressed out. I mean, it really, I stopped exercising. I stopped eating well because I was doing fast food and all this crazy stuff just to buy time on my way to and from work in the late hours. And I think it's hard for us to kind of get out of that. I, I fortunately had an amazing spouse. You know, we talk about finding that important spouse in your life who was incredibly supportive during those 18 months. I don't think I would have got through it without her, quite honestly. And at the end of the 18 months, I mean, she kind of like quickly got me back on the train of exercising pretty much every other day, if not daily, and eating much better. Um, so, you know, I think work-life balance is a challenge for us, but I think it's important to recognize that sometimes it's okay to say no to an additional task. And I talk about that in the book a little bit, that there's some opportunities that I ran into even when I was in academia. I was trying to show myself since I was new to that world that I could do things as well as other seasoned professors. And I took on, quite honestly, too much, too much than I could possibly handle. And I had to go into my boss, the head of the accounting department, and say, I'm so sorry, I can't do this online course you're looking for me to do. And that was a horrible day for me. I, I don't like that kind of situation, but it's the best thing I ever did in my career in, in academia because I realized it was too much. And I went back and just did what I did well, which was being in the classroom and teaching those students face to face. So it's an interesting dichotomy, but it's an interesting discussion in the book as to how I kind of handled some of those uh, challenging work-life balances issues. Yeah, I didn't ever want to say no to overtime or the boss asking to put a little more effort in because, you know, back in my head, if I, if I say no next time, they're not going to ask me right. or when the promotion comes, they're going to pass me up. I was fortunate enough to get promoted, but the thing that I, I regret about the promotion is I sacrificed the part of the job that I love to do the most. Oh, interesting. I was a heavy equipment operator. Okay. And then I went to be in supervisor. So, so somebody, you stop that. Yeah, yeah. And I love that. But you know, you it's know, interesting you mentioned that, Kyle. I, I had some people at Hershey who were incredibly good as kind of like staff people or mid managers, right? But when we would talk to them and say, hey, you know, we think there's a great opportunity for you in more of a higher leadership role. Sometimes uh, most people would say yes, because like you said, you kind of want to get that higher paycheck, support right. the family, et cetera, right? But there's some that just simply said, you know what, I'm quite happy where I'm at and I'll stay in middle management. And, and I, I would laud them for that because that's a hard thing to do. As you said, that's a really hard thing for us to do. But I just think, I guess my litmus test is sometimes it's okay to say no when maybe you realize it's outside your boundaries and you aren't going to be as adept as that as maybe they're looking for in that role. And sometimes you have to admit that. And that's what I went through with this online course. I just wasn't ready for it. So I think it's a, it's a tough thing for us to do, but sometimes saying no is the right thing to do. Oh, it really is. You know, that saying that money can't buy you happiness. 
I never really understood that because like, well, I, of course I'd be a lot more happier <laughs> if I had money, you know, <laughs> but I did miss being out there with the guys and, and sure. running the equipment and, you know, being right in the middle of the action because being in management, yeah, you have paperwork and you got to take care of a lot of things, but there was also a lot of downtime and you're like, oh my God, will the clock hurry up? I want to go <laughs> yeah. home. <laughs> yeah, it's not the most riveting uh, job in the world at some times. <laughs> and you didn't really get to enjoy the money anyway. Your family yeah. got to enjoy it, but you didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, and a lot of times I've seen this happen in my career uh, at different places that some people took on those additional tasks and there's so much stress even though they were making more money, they were much less happier than they were prior to that promotion. And that's a, that's a hard thing for us to understand as we go through our careers. So I guess it's also important to have a strategic plan to go from what you're doing to what you want to do. Maybe have a financial plan. This is what is going to back me up instead of just diving right into it. Yeah. I mean, that, that really gets into the key topic. I think of my book, Kyle is really, you know, talk about personal finances and how do you prepare for other stages, particularly like retirement. And I, I spend, I think there's three chapters, chapter seven, eight, nine in the book talking about, first of all, personal finances, just kind of the basic stuff. I mean, I know this sounds so simple to some of your listeners, but a lot of us just don't do it as well as we like. Uh, develop a budget. I talk about budgets and, you know, there's some tips I give in the book about using an app called You Need a Budget, which is a pretty appropriate name. It's Y-N-A-B for short, but it's a great tool for my wife and I. We can enter something right in our cell phone if we're out of the restaurant, just to understand how much is left in our restaurant budget, for example. So budgets are important. Uh, another one is develop a, a cash emergency fund. Uh, we, we try and recommend three to six months of your expenses because, you know, I just had this happen here in the first quarter of this year where in a property I own in Hershey, Pennsylvania, about two hours away, as I'm now in Philly, I have I just had to replace an HVAC system for ten thousand dollars. I mean, you know, these are things pop up. Right. And I also had a, uh, a couple of windows start to leak. So I had to replace like five thousand dollars worth of windows. So have a cash emergency fund. That way you, you have uh, money readily available for when those things pop up that you may you know, want to put on a credit card and pay those crazy interest rates. Speaking of credit, I talk about paying down debt. Just the sooner you can pay down debt, the better. Um, there's a couple of methods I talk about in the book. Uh, here's one for you folks that have 401k plans. This sounds silly, but make sure you're maximizing your company match. So for example, at Hershey, we if you put 6% of your salary away, Hershey would match 50% of that, which means they would put another 3% into your, into your retirement fund. And 3% doesn't sound like a lot, but even if you're making, you know, uh, say 60000 a year, that's a good chunk of money going in every year for 20 some years. I mean, I, I know many people at Hershey who worked there 20, 25 years and came out with million dollar 401k plan balances because they, you know, my rule was I always put 10% as a minimum in. And that's kind of the rule 10 to 12% is what you should be shooting for. But maximize those 401k matches because that's literally free money from the company that a lot of people forgo. So that's my fourth tip. And my fifth tip is communicate with your specific, significant other. This one sounds silly to people, but I throw out a concept in the book called budget or money dates, which I know doesn't sound very exciting, Kyle. <laughs> but what the idea of this, this money date is, my wife and I do this once a month, usually towards the latter part of the month. We'll go out to a restaurant, have a nice bottle of wine, and then guess what? We could talk about money and finances. And, and my wife is a physician by nature. She was a physician for a number of years. She hates talking about finances, right? As many of us and many of us do. And but what I find is we if we go to an, a, an outside uh, setting, like a restaurant we really enjoy, have a nice bottle of wine, nice dinner, it's a little bit easier to talk about some of those things. So I'll give you an example. So we, at our November one last year, my wife mentioned that her car is now 15 years old. She has 130,000 miles on it. She probably is going to replace that this in the early, early part of 2024. So at that point, we start setting aside some money for a replacement vehicle, which she got here in March. And now she has a nicer, much better used car. But that came out of a discussion at a money date. So as much as that's usually a point of contention for us with our spouses, uh, talking about money and finances, I try and flip it a little bit and have a money date that's a little bit more fun. 
and then talk about those things that might be coming up in your, or if you're preparing for retirement in five, 10 years, talk about those and those money dates, make sure you're both on the same path for that. So that's my concept of kind of, you know, helping people out prepare for those ne next stages of life. When my wife and I finally sat down and talked about our finances, what we wanted to do, be prepared for, you know, the day is going to come when she's going to want to retire. Sure. And we decided that it was time to start sacrificing some of the stuff that we really, really didn't need. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how many people love the entertainment and have all the the channels on your TV yeah. or the apps and all that? And like, do we really, really need this? Do, do right. We, and those add up to there are a lot of money when you add them all up. They really are. And, you know, how many times have I had to go into the hospital for a surgery or, or something along that line yeah. or the vehicles need some kind yeah. of maintenance or maintenance? Yeah. Appliances break down. And yeah, yeah I understand about that air conditioning. And <laughs> now a lot of people may not be able to do this, but I paid down my credit cards and got rid of them. I don't use them yeah. anymore. So you don't use them at all. That, that actually, I, I laud you for that. I, I, I am not in that boat. What I do with mine, Kyle's a little bit different. When we put charges through, which we do, we make sure we pay it off every month. So we never carry a balance. But I love that you've devoid yourself of all credit cards. That's that's actually the best way to live from a cash perspective. <laughs> well, you know, you're tempted to say, well, I'll just pay the bare minimum this month. And, yeah. You know, and then you, before you know it, it's piled on and piled on. Oh, excuse me. And you're paying more than you really should be paying. Yeah, there, there's a, I forget the study that I've seen on this, but somebody had done a study that if you, if you incur like $5,000 on your credit card, right, and you pay the minimums, if you, it takes you like some ridiculous amount of years to pay down a $5,000 credit card charge. And by the time you're done, you've paid more than double that amount in interest charges. So, I mean, to your point, it's, you know, it's something we, it's easy for your listeners and, and all of us to fall into is to just pay that bare minimum because we seem like we'll take care of it later, right? We'll pay more of that next month. And then we never do. And that becomes a really onerous expense for us. If we had paid cash up, we would have saved ourselves a lot of, a lot of cash. And it's also important that, you know, if you sat, want to sacrifice, you've got to also want to be able to. Uh, treat yourselves from time mm -hmm. to time. Yep, definitely. I, I, I'm a big on reward system. I mean, this is one of the things that when my wife and I were, were planning for retirement, we would we would kind of say, okay, as you said earlier, we're going to forego some things. We weren't going to buy new cars anymore. We're going to buy used cars. Yep. We weren't going to, you know, take the fancy trip somewhere. We would take a lot uh, cheaper, maybe just going to a local beach or what have you. And we saved those dollars, but the reward was when we hit retirement. We had a much better ability to enjoy life at that age, which is what we're doing now in our 60s. So it's kind of like deferred gratification. That's hard for us to understand, but it's an important concept. And you mentioned before about talking about health problems. Hmm. Well, once yeah. again, I, you know, I think you I had some major back issues. Yes, I've I've had uh, three surgeries so far, oh. uh, you know, and I, I can't work anymore. I, I can't lift anything there's a lot of things that i'm not able to do but okay. i find the things i can do but um exactly what do you go into about about health i mean surely yeah. it's taking care of yourself which is something i didn't do when i was younger yeah actually uh, mine's a little bit different mine is more of uh my wife unfortunately kyle as as many you know it's a it's, it's a scary statistic that one out of every six american women are uh, struck by breast cancer at some point in their lives. So in 2018, my wife, who was fairly young at that, she was late forties at the time, had uh, a stage two breast cancer diagnosis. So, and she was a physician. So it was really hard for her, you know, to kind of be on the other side of the patient situation and have somebody tell her that she had to have a major surgery with a mastectomy in January of 2018. The good news is she had the surgery, was very successful. She went through a very light chemo for like three months, three, four months, I believe. It wasn't that bad. Lost her hair, you know, went through a complete body change as you do when you go through that really tough treatment. Um, and then, you know, the good news is I think in that year, she had a total of like six surgeries, just different things kept, kept 
popping up. And so it was a pretty rough year there. But the good news, here we are six years later, she's cancer free. Uh, so I talk about in the book, I mean, what we both went through in that cancer scare, similar to you with your back issues. It's just a really tough thing when something health wise really cripples you and, and changes your life. And it did for her. Uh, now, now, the lemon to lemonade story here for her is that she went from having breast cancer in 2018, Kyle, to when we moved to Philly, which is in 2021, as part of our retirement. She's now part of a breast cancer survivor rowing team. It's what they call dragon, bo dragon boat rowing. 20, 20 women, 10 on each side. And now she's doing all these major competitions, uh, both here in Philly and, and also nationally across the country. And then also that group does weightlifting in their spare time. So she's been to like four uh, weightlifting competitions. So she took what was a horrible situation in 2018 with being struck with stage two breast cancer. And this is what's so amazing. She's turned it into being a, a strength for her now, right? She's now part of this team. She's much stronger physically than she's ever been. She's very, very into health. And thus that also pushes that on her spouse for me to be a little bit healthier. So I, I, I spend a, a whole chapter on, you know, facing obstacles. And that's one of the three major stories I talk about in there was overcoming breast cancer for my wife and I. The other two are a little bit more of a career oriented uh, situations. Yeah. Refuse to be a victim, refuse to give up. Find yeah. the blessings. That's what you have to do. Look for that inner light because there, there's there's a positive in every bad thing that happens to us. So outside of that situation with your wife, what, what's been the biggest hurdle in your life? Biggest hurdle for me, you know, you know, somebody asked me this in a prior podcast, would I do anything different, right? If I were to take my life and re-script it, and honestly, my answer to that podcast or as it is to you is I wouldn't change a thing. I mean, I, I've really been blessed with, I talk about my family in the very first chapter. My first lesson is never regret spending time with your family and never forget those who have left us. And there's a, there's a reason to that message as you'll read through the first chapter of my book. But I think family is very important. I was very lucky, Kyle. I was brought up in an incredibly hardworking family. We grew up on a farm. I learned the value of a dollar very early on and that's carried through in my entire life. I was very lucky to come out of a, you know, a great school system and move to a local college in Gettysburg College and, and stay local. And, um, and then being blessed with an amazing career through Hershey was the highlight 20 some years there and then teaching at the University of Illinois for seven. So honestly, I don't have any regrets in my life. I mean, if there's anything at all I would have done, probably I would have moved to teaching a little bit earlier in my career because I enjoyed that so much, that, that classroom interaction with students. And I also did something that's kind of fun I did something called one-on-one -on -one coffee chats with my students. So if you were my student, Kyle, you know, we might meet downstairs at the uh, coffee shop in our first floor of our classroom buildings. And my one rule is, Kyle, we can't talk about accounting. That, that's, that's what the classroom was <laughs> for, right? So right. there were some really cool discussions there. We talked about career stuff. We talked about, you know, how much money you think you're going to make when you come out. Because uh, a lot of our students think they're going to make a lot more than they do. <laughs> So there's some really good discussions, but I truly, I truly enjoyed those seven years of interaction with those students, both in the classroom and as importantly, in my mind, outside the classroom as well. So I, I don't think I've changed the script much for my life. I'm, I'm lucky uh, that I've met an incredible woman. We've been together 37 years uh, and she still guides me today. So uh, I think we're enjoying retirement life together here in the city of Philadelphia. And it's been kind of a, a new exposure because we grew up very rural. We're both in small towns when we grew up in Pennsylvania. There's something about being in the service of others that's so fulfilling for your life. It is. It really is. And, and to give you an example, my wife, she, you know, she was a physician for many years where she helped patients, but now like today she's right across the street at a Broad Street Ministry here in downtown Philly, and they serve over 5,500 homeless people who come in for mail in the uh, building and also to get a hot meal at lunchtime. So she, as you just said, serving others is probably one of the keys to the success of our life. And that's why I enjoyed doing the book so much. I enjoyed talking about it. And now I'm writing some articles for a magazine that's uh, talking about personal finance tips. Do you have a website? I do. Yeah, it's uh, it's www.davischeckmate.com. And I'd encourage your listeners to go check that out. There's some really interesting articles I have on there for both personal finance and retirement articles. There's some reviews of my book. There's more about me. And also there's uh, a way to get signed copies of my book off the website. 
Oh, awesome. And do you have social media? I do. I'm not a heavy social media person. <laughs> Kyle, this, <laughs> the book has pushed me into social media than, uh, sooner than ever before. But I do have a LinkedIn account, uh, which I use heavily. And my Instagram is at Davis Checkmate. And then I also have those on Amazon. You can go on Amazon and buy the book as well. So lots of ways to reach out to me. And I would encourage your listeners. It's a, it's a really easy to read 150 page book, Kyle. I think there's an incredible amount of tips in there that hopefully at least one or more tips will benefit your listeners as they read through it. Well, I will put those links in the description to make it easy for folks to find you. Great. I appreciate that, Kyle. Hey, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. This has been a great conversation. Yeah, I really enjoyed the time with you. I think, uh, you know, we, a lot of the points you mentioned in your life have struck what's in my book. So, uh, you know, I think these are salient points that we all face at one point or another. And it's good to know some people are going through this and have some tips on how to help you. Oh, and I also want to thank all you folks out there. If you are new to the channel, I hope you'll come back. Please hit that subscribe button for my regulars. You guys are awesome because you make it possible for me to do this. Till the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.